Hi, welcome back. I am going to play around and do a full face of makeup today, hopefully without using any brushes. I've done a couple of these videos in the past and I don't know, I just feel like a lot of the makeup that I own, it can vary or the stuff can very easily be used without brushes. So we're gonna try to do a pretty full face look today and not pick up a brush. Now I will say in the end, I'm probably gonna powder with a sponge doesn't count as a brush though. So yeah, let's just go ahead and ride this out and see how it goes. I am going to start out with the new Auric Glow Lust. Now, by the time this video goes up, my review of Auric will probably already have went live. Is this supposed to be a pump? Okay, my bad, I cannot pull the lid off. And so I twisted it and the entire cap came off and I was very confused. Um, anyways, this is actually my first time using the Auric products. Uh, I've used, I tested the glitter top coat on one of the shadows yesterday, but that's it. So um, what I'm trying to say is that I'm filming this video before my Auric review actually goes up. So this is kind of a part of the trial or the test if you will so if you want to see the actual review on this brand like full on after i've tried it for several days then that video should already be up by the time this one goes up so i'm going to start out with glow lust it's a luminizer and it's compared often it seems to charlotte tilbury's hollywood flawless filter which just upon first pump i definitely get that vibe. It's a little bit, it seems a little bit more foundation-y, like a little bit more foundation-like maybe. Oh yeah, very similar vibes to um, Hollywood Flawless Filter. And personally with Hollywood Flawless Filter, I like to use that as more of a like finishing highlighter, like to dab on the tops of my cheeks because I don't often use primers or things underneath my makeup. I have to say, I do like the way this looks and I'm not huge on prepping my skin with overly glowy products, but this, like I said, I feel like it has a little bit more of a skin-like or foundation finish compared to Hollywood Flawless Filter. That one's a little bit more sheer. Um, this did add like a slight pigment to my skin. MAC Face and Body. Uh, several of you all were triggered that I did not mention Face and Body in my top five high-end, top five drugstore video. MAC has played us a couple times with this product. I purposely kind of backed off talking about it because it was not available for a long time for whatever reason. I even called my MAC Pro store and asked them, yo, are you guys getting rid of this? Is it being discontinued? And I could just never get a definite answer. So I really backed off using it and also talking about it because I was prepared for it to not be in our lives anymore. Um, but if we're talking ultimate foundation to apply with your hands, it's face and body. The way I like to apply face and body on myself is kind of just by like pressing it in like this. By the way, if you need an application video on how to properly apply this and how to kind of understand how it works a little bit better, I've done a video on how to apply it. It's pretty old, but the rules still apply. But basically, this is a layering foundation. So you do one coat that's gonna give you like a sheer finish, and then you give it about 60 seconds, 60, 90 seconds, and then if you want more coverage, you go in uh, with another layer. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to do more of like a light medium coverage today. And I just go ahead and press my second layer on top. I also get asked pretty frequently how to pick your color in face and body. And it is a little confusing. Um, face and body 
is numbered differently than the rest of the foundations. So basically you have your N colors and your C colors. Your C colors are the ones that are gonna run more on the neutral to yellow side, neutral to warm side. Your N colors are gonna run on the neutral to pink side. So for me personally, I can kind of get away with both. I have a pretty neutral undertone. It's not super yellow, but it's also not super pink. So I've worn both shades. The shade that I'm wearing currently is C1. If you find that you always purchase a warm to yellow undertone foundation, go with a C color. If you find that you want something more neutral, slightly more on the pinker side, go with an N shade. Then you're gonna have a number beside your N or your C. And basically those correspond with the rest of Max coloring system. So uh, you have a one to seven, I think is the highest that face and body goes. And the one category is gonna be equivalent to uh, an, in, like let's say an NW10 to an NC15. I'll explain the numbering system for this foundation in the info box because I feel like I just word blabber when I try to explain it out loud and it's just much easier for me to write it in the info box for you to get a better understanding. Oh, gorgeous. I mean, I didn't even look in a mirror while I was doing that. That's one thing that I love about this formula. You can't really mess it up. Uh, sticking with MAC, I'm gonna take a little bit of, this is the Studio Fix Perfecting Stick. I was hoping that this was still available and it is, they still make it. Uh, it's a little bit more blendable than using something like a liquid concealer. I just feel like it has a bit more of a satiny finish to it. It almost just kind of blends itself out. Yeah, I just really feel like it does the work for you. So now I'm going to move into bronzer. This is probably gonna be the hardest part. I hate applying cream and liquid bronzers with my hands, um, but we're gonna give it a go. And I'm gonna use the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Glow. This one's faux tan. Um, it also comes in warmth. I have faux tan, so that's the one that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna be very careful with it. I'm just gonna start out with a tiny little dot on the back of my hand and I'm just gonna softly kind of like press it in. Okay, really not too shabby. So I'm gonna continue on and I'm gonna use a product I haven't used on camera yet. I've only tried these one other time and it's the NARS Air Matte Blushes. These are the new NARS Cream Blushes. Um, to be honest, the shade that I tried, it was called Hushed, wasn't like, I wasn't crazy about the formula. These are like very sheer, moussey, texture it's very strange the texture is very interesting on these it almost reminds me of like a melted play-doh texture i don't know where i'm getting that from but just when i pick up the color it kind of fades very quickly so um i don't know i don't know with this brighter shade how it's going to perform but um, i've got a little bit already on the back of my hands i've blended it out and I'm just slightly going to um, press into the skin. I actually really like this color. It kind of gives a little bit of a sunburned effect. Formula wise though, I don't know if this is my favorite formula ever in a cream blush. Um, I'll have to play around with it a little bit more. I also have the classic orgasm shade, but for the price and knowing the other cream blushes I have in my collection, 
not 100% like popping out to me as a favorite formula right now. You just never know though. All right, so like I said, I do wanna set my face slightly. And for that, I'm just gonna take my little puff from my Fenty Powder Foundation Compact. I much prefer this powder as um, just a setting powder as opposed to a powder foundation. And I'm just going to apply like the smallest amount really just to my under eye area, probably through here too. Nothing revolutionary is going to be happening with the brows. I'm actually just going to take my MAC eyebrow styler and give them a little fill in and that's pretty much going to be it for the brows. Okay, very excited about this because it's my first time using the full Auric Cream Eyeshadow Duos. Um, I have Defiance. I think this is the one I'm going to use today. I have all the shades, but like I said, if you want to see them in action, I should already have the Auric review up before this video goes up. Uh, but this is actually my first time using the, so you'll get a little like secondhand first impressions. Um, so basically it's a cream eyeshadow on the bottom. You can see mine's brand new. And then on the top portion, the lid portion, you just lift it up and there is a pressed like powder glitter pigment. So um, we're gonna play around with this. I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to see kind of how easy this formula is to work with. And, uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt because they might work better with um, a brush. I'm just gonna be using my finger today to test out and we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna start out with a pretty sheer amount because that's what I like to do with cream eyeshadows anyways, and just slightly blend. So pretty sheer upon initial application. I'm gonna go ahead and do a second layer. Okay, so initial thoughts on this cream section. Definitely would be more pleased if I were using a brush just to kind of polish things up, but to just be using my finger and nothing else, um, I mean, it blended pretty, pretty smoothly. I will say I'm noticing like a little bit of trouble layering the product. It does seem like it only wants to build up with probably about two layers. Um, I am starting to see like a little bit of creasage going on right here after applying, um, I think I did three. Um, but it's an interesting formula. It is uh, creamy and moussey, but it does dry down. Like it, it does have substance to it to where it's drying down. And being someone that uses cream eyeshadows on the reg, I appreciate that because at some point they have to dry down or they're just not gonna stay. So um, this, this definitely has dried down a bit. I do think that my look would be a little bit more polished if I had my Real Techniques brush really quickly just to sweep through, but um, you know, this is a no brush toot, so we're gonna stick to it. And I'm gonna top it with the glitter that comes in the top. I haven't tried this color yet. I think it's like a golden champagne -y color. Now I did try one of the pressed pigments. I think it's in the rose gold set or more of like the mauvish rose gold. And the pigment is packed tightly. This one seems a little bit more buttery, a little bit more smooth. On the other one, the pigment was pressed very, very tightly. And I had to go in a couple times to um, really get some product. This one seems, you can see, on the back of my hand, it seems a little bit more buttery. So I'm just gonna pop this over the top. Okay. 
I mean, I would definitely say it's pretty transformative. Not as um, reflective as my bodyography pressed pigments are, but that may not have been what she was going for. But I mean, it does, does really transform the eyes. Okay, I do want to do some smudgy liner goodness, so I'm going to take Bourbon from Urban Decay and I'm going to tight line and then also just kind of add some extra, extra smudginess to my lash line. I'm going to use the infamous TikTok famous mascara. It's Maybelline Sky High. I've been using it for a few days now and it's pretty good mascara. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it does a good job. I wouldn't say revolutionary, but pretty good mascara. I'm gonna keep this glittery moment alive on the eyes and transfer it also to my lips and I'm gonna use the Persona lip gloss. This is a new one, it's called Twilight. Oh, it's so stunning. And I'm also gonna use her lip liner in Rosewood. Okay, I don't love this blush color with the final look, so I'm gonna take Bobbi Brown's um, Powder Pink. This is a pot rouge. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of this. Okay. Personally, I feel like the blush at the end saved the day because I was looking at my face and I'm like, something's missing. And um, I just feel like, yeah, that tied the look together much better. Uh, wow, we made it through. Absolutely zero brushes. One little touch of a powder, no big deal. Um, but overall, I'm liking it. Um, I'm excited to try the Oryx shadows out a little bit more in depth because I feel... Like they definitely need a few days of experimenting which um, application technique is best should you layer with them. But like I said, that video should be up by the time this one's up. So I hope you enjoyed the full face, no brushes. If you have any questions for me, leave them down below and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.